Oh, brother. Okay. We got the, uh, the gang is all here now. What's this all about? Why have I been called up again? Don't you realize it's the only time for my little baby audio? When my son's belly is empty, he is fiercer than a pack of wolves. Exploited by the police we were, like miserable dogs, forced to bear false witness. And when cast from this courtroom myself, I became a ruined man in a trice, a worthless withered antique. Not more I have to say, the sun is set on this Rasu tea shop owner's existence. Be that it is may, Karukita san, something has come to light that requires your clarification. As far as your Rasute memory serves, have you- Wahoo! That's- Yeah, that's it! The one! The very one! The very exact one that it is! The resplendent spandafleur sweet treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day. It can't be! Mm, as I thought. Young man! They lined this decrepit old fool Put me out of my misery. Where? Where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Oh, um, I'm not sure if it was dropped anywhere. We found your coin sandwich between a beefsteak and its plate, soaking in the seasoned meat's juices. Sandwich? This is soaking? Seriously? Clearly, it couldn't have fallen there by accident. Which means... Somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. S somebody concealed my hooey treasure between a slab of meat and a metal plate? Who would do such a thing? Such an unconscionable thing. Hmm, I wonder who. Excuse me, could I say something? Uh, go on. Proceed, Inspector Hazunaga. I mentioned this earlier on the, in the trial, but I was working undercover in the restaurant in order to investigate another case. Ah, yes, that's right. The secret undercover operation. La Carnival is a high-class western cuisine restaurant. It uh, attracts worthy diners, including many foreigners. Recently, there's been a run of similarly executed thefts targeting the restaurant's rich clientele. A number of such incidents have been reported to the police bureau. Hmm, wicked crimes indeed. We wanted to nip the case in the bud quickly, especially with so many foreigners being affected. So that's why you were sent in undercover, is it? Hey, yes, I took on the job of waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seems likely that this Goban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm, so unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hit karakuta sons Koban is all too clear. What? What? I think the court would like to hear the defense's view on this matter. Tell us, who is the despicable scrantle that stole karakuta sans koban and hid it underneath the stick? Um... Well, obviously, it's, uh... Is there a funny answer here somewhere? Okay, uh, let me accuse him then. Let me. I, I was gonna accuse myself, but I'm gonna accuse Kazuma. There you go. Yes, seems like a likely candidate for a Koban thief. No, come on, Rinsuke. Okay. Huh? You you shocked me, Kazuma. Not as much as you shocked me. 
No one could have approached that table unnoticed. Even if you're a crazy fool, you couldn't have missed that. I'm not sure you should be calling Karakuda a sign of crazy fool, Kazuma. It's you I was calling the crazy fool. Ah, maybe I'm on the wrong track here. Ah, oh, man. I don't believe I could... I don't believe I can... <clears throat> I don't believe I can have heard you correctly, Consul. Let me hear your opinion on the matter again. Tell us, who is the despicable scandal that stole Karakuta son's koban and hid it underneath the stake? Obviously, it can only be you, Sergeant Daisanosa. What? How? How dare you, 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 you monster! Monster! I stole that cobra, did I? I'm the master thief of what kind of all, am I? You're seriously accusing me of this crime, cadet? But it wasn't me, it was Ido! Ido is a mastermind behind all this! Mm. You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son? An innocent little baby? It's you who is the monster, Sergeant Nosa! Uh, oh, you. Yeah. Uh, ah! Uh, clip, 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 what? Excuse me? What just happened? Do any of you know of the extraordinary well wages that your opponent on Pure Army pays those it expects to keep our country safe? I understand that the temporary increase in taxation owing to the recently ended conflicts remains in place. And I have heard it's hard for lower-ranking soldiers to make a living, yes. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? A place is heaving with money. Every three days I go there and do reconnaissance for a target. And I enjoy chomping my way for a good steak at the same time. Sounds like it doesn't bother with a knife and fork, even. Which is worryingly unbelievable. And your target that day was the old man and his Koban. Yes, so... He was an easy mark. I slipped a coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. <laughs> a veritable phantom thief you are. I was all set to leave the steak I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Bang! Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. I do too. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could, on the double. I slipped it under a stake, hoping that I'd be, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. Right then. So. Fascinating. This is ridiculous. Perhaps you could carry on with this absurd prattling in your own time. Well, Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady, of course. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. May the esteemed gentlewoman please be excused, Your Excellency! 
Hmm, uh, indeed. The theft of the coupon was clearly perpetrated by this baby subtle sergeant. It would certainly appear to be unrelated to Dr. Wilson's murder. Of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such is an of such an idea astounds me. N n nonsense is it? Uh, um, well, uh, oof. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Very well. Now that all questions concerning this witness's testimony have been answered, I see no further justification for detaining her. Miss Brett, you are free to leave. Thank you, Your Excellency. Good luck, everyone. Hold on a minute, Judge. What are you doing? And good day. Hold. Come on, guys. Get it together. Rinosuke, what's the matter with you? This is no time for daydreaming. Oh, no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I can't quite work out a... I can't quite work out what exactly, but something she said jarred with me. I feel like there was a contradiction in there somewhere. Something didn't quite add up. If that's the case, don't just stand there thinking. Make your voice heard. S sorry You can think later, but if you don't call out now, it'll be too late. The trial will be over. Alright. Hold it! Wait, Miss Brett! What is it now? I'm afraid. Just one last time. There's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like to... I'd like you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a moment ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? What new student nonsense is this? Well, what parting words are you talking about, Rinus? Okay. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat? The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Yes, I'm right. What she said there exposed an undeniable contradiction. I'm going to need to see evidence, Counsel. If Miss Brett's words truly are contradictory, where is the evidence to prove it? Okay. I've got only one... One, um, penalty left before I... Before all of this is over, so... Alright, let's see. Um, where is the evidence to prove it? The plate? <clears throat> the plate? Yeah? Do I present the plate again? Or the, the crime scene photo? Yeah, there was a knife and fork on that. So... It's either the photo or the plate. I don't know what I should go for first. <sighs> Alright, let's go with the photo. The photographic print of the scene taken immediately after the incident occurred. What's interesting is the plate of steak that you can see on the victim's table. The steak that Miss Brett had been eating before the professor was killed. Yeah. Oh, they still haven't figured out that. Oh, for fuck. They still have. They they thought that the sergeant hit the coin in. In the lady's steak, not in his own plate. Oh, fuck's sake. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table just before the professor was killed. Now you're just splitting hairs! Not true. Doesn't something about the steak strike you as very unnatural? Unnatural? What on earth do you mean? It's extremely obvious. I'm talking about the shape of the edge where it's been eaten. I see you've noticed it too, Miss Brett. Notice what exactly, Consul? Just a few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed no Englishman could even 
contemplate picking up a steak and biting into it without using a knife and fork. Of course she did! She's a refined English gentlewoman herself! Then take a good look at the steak. In particular, the edge where it's been eaten. As you can see, there are clearly defined barbaric teeth marks there. Ah! Oh! Ah! It looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So, if the witness, as she claims, wouldn't contemplate eating anything without using a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Oh. But, uh, what is your actual point? Perhaps the delightful Miss Brett was rival. Oh, Mom. Uh, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any, any longer. Uh, of course, of course. This will all be over in the blink of an eye. Rest assured, I'm about to put this wrecker in his place. Uh, I've had enough, you irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Oh, uh, of course, dear lady. What's the matter, Miss Brett? Have we ruffled your feathers? Clearly, the witness knows what this means. She's realized the catastrophic implications these teeth marks in the stake have for her. Yurisuke, do you know where we're going with this? No, but... Yes, now at last, it's all come together. The mysterious teeth marks in the steak that had allegedly been eaten with cutlery. The reason why the bloodstain I know I saw somehow seems to have disappeared. Yeah. And most importantly, the evidence that proves once and for all who shot Dr. Wilson that day. I accept that these teeth marks in the stake are a little unnatural, as you put it, Counsel. But what exactly are you suggesting that tells us? Everything, Your Excellency. Everything? Yes, I believe that these barbaric teeth marks in the stake here amount to conclusive evidence in this case. Evidence that will prove beyond any doubt who shot Dr. Wilson. Oh. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? You wouldn't know the meaning of the phrase. Typical Japanese empty threats. How can you be so sure? Oh, it's quite simple. If you really had such conclusive evidence, you would have presented it to the court long ago. Actually, the evidence I'm talking about hasn't been brought before the court yet. Hasn't been... What? But just because it hasn't been shown yet, doesn't mean that the evidence doesn't exist. This is absurd! The trial has run several hours already! And you say there's evidence yet to be brought forward? This can't be! There can't be! I don't believe you have it! I don't! But there's someone who does have it. Someone in this very courtroom. And if that person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to, it will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Very well. I have a feeling this will be my last request of the defense in this trial. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? The answer is obvious. It's Inspector Hazanaga. What? I... I have it? Yes. You... You think I've been withholding conclusive evidence? That's what... <coughs> <coughs> no, 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 I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak. And as well as admitting to stealing karakuta sons coin, he told us that he slipped it under the steak. You, you watch it, cadet. 
Oh, I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you please confirm something for me? Was the stake that you put the coin under, in fact, your own? Turn shot! Affirmative, of course. I might be a soldier in the pure Nippon army, but still. I am not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide something in it. In other words, the stake that the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nosa's meal. But that makes no sense! That plate was taken from the victim's table! Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites of, out of her stake, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it. To even suggest a thing would be an affront to the entire British Empire. Well then, how do you explain this paradox? Exactly! Surely you're not gonna suggest... that the sergeant switched the two stakes over! Well, not the sergeant. But, <clears throat> close. You... You did switch the plates? Well, after it happened, the, um... Oh, he, he did switch the plates. <laughs> When I saw a civilian had been murdered right in front of my own eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake and hid the coin underneath it. But then, when the waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd be getting my marching orders. So when the cadet here was arrested and taken off to the kitchen, I seized my chance. <laughs> with military position and timing, I switched my stake with the one on the foreign lady's table. What? You can't have. I never saw you do such a thing. It was called Operation Whitening Boat. There was no time for strategic planning. It was do or die, I tell you. So yes, I did what had to be done. Unbelievable! You're right about that. However, fear not, Prosecutor-san. What now? I swear on the brass buttons on my uniform. That's all I did, sir. All you did? That's plenty, Sergeant. Yes. So, if Sergeant knows to switch the plates over, it means he took Miss Brett's stake and the plate it was on back to his own table. Yes, that follows. Inspector Hazanaga? Niels? Earlier in this trial, you told the court this. You said that you had not only taken Miss Brett's stake after the incident, but also the sergeant's. That to preserve evidence, you had taken both. Ah! That's correct. Then please present it to the court now. The plate that was actually on the victim's table at the precise moment he was shot. Shut up! What can pos what could that possibly tell us now? I mean, a cold slab of tough meat. I it can't have the slightest bearing on the case. Objection! No, you're not wriggling your way out of out of it this time, lady. I I beg your pardon. Surely you're not that. Surely you're not that forgetful. Surely you remember the reason why the steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you, no? <clears throat> you're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see that plate was to confirm something the defendant remembers seeing. Thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was on the table directly behind Dr. Wilson, there was a clear spattering of blood from the gunshot wound to the victim's chest. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. 
And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Let us not prolong this any further. Inspector, you will show the evidence to the court. Present the beefsteak and plate that was originally on the victim's table at the time of the incident. Yes, sir. Hey, sorry for keeping you. Here is the other steak and its plate. Please feel free to examine it. <clears throat> and... There it is. The blood stain. It's clearly visible. Look! Yes. Now this makes everything clear. The blood you can see on the side of the plate shows that at the moment of the victim... Sh shows that, that at the victim the moment... Shows that at the moment the victim was shot, he was facing the table with his back to me. In other words, it's impossible for Naruhoto san to have shot the victim. Oh! It, it can't be! In fact, there's only one person who could possibly have shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. <laughs> Um, that's right, Miss Giselle Brett. It's you. <gasps> I'll done by a Japanese me by a Japanese schoolboy. No. No! No! Uh. Ah! Ooh. Uh. 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 Kya! Wow! 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 Oh! All right. Goodbye. Bye bye. Okay, she's gone now. She, she went, she went, she went to the sky. That's good. <clears throat> oh, she's back. Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Most unbecoming behavior for an English gentleman. Gentlewoman, forgive me. Well, uh, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth, this time. Gladly, Your Excellency. It was, it was I who took the professor's life, using career. As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you planned to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water. Because career is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see... I only needed to see the professor take one tiny sip of his water, and it would all be over. I would place the steak I had ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone, and leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such as that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point, so I concocted a plan on the spur of the moment. 
a plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happen to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of Carrere in my handbag and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. Ha! Under your skirt! So I was right. There were two guns. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which he had presumably placed on the floor. Placed where you were sure that I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I'd intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up, bang! That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused a commotion, at which the point the waiter at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously I assume Naruto son was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that adjoins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor and his chair around. Because of course you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he'd picked up the gun. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. Huh. Well, now what? Your Excellency? Yes. I wonder... Might I speak with you in private later? I shall call on you. Thank you. Good day then, everyone. I hope you can forgive me, Naruhodasan. All right. It would seem this trial has finally run its course. I presume the prosecution is in agreement? This, this can't be! Takatsushi Hachi does not lose! Not to the likes of this, this rookie student! You better start getting used to tough opposition. Renosuke Naruto! What? Y yes This insult of the Ochi family name will never be forgotten! You've become conceited with age, Council, but the old have to stand aside and make way for the new. It's the way of the world. May you never forget that. Yeah, <laughs> Oh! Ah. Ah. A thousand millennia might pass, and still the Archie clan will never measure up to the Narahodo clan. This trial in the Supreme Court of Japan will, I believe, go down in history as the start of a new chapter in our country's judicial system. Despite being summoned as the accused, you, Rinusuke Naruhodo, presented an excellent case. I... Uh, thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. But the Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure that science will soon bring out new methods of investigation and new procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what it would look like I cannot begin to imagine. 
that is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asugi? Yes? After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can, absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Uh, uh never mind. As for you, Rinusuke Naruhoto. Oh, yes. In you, I sense. How can I put it? Unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that onwards. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Rinusuke Naruhoto, not guilty. This court is now adjourned. Whew. 22nd of November, 2.46 p.m. Supreme Court of Japan. Defendant's Antechamber 5. I can't believe it. I can't believe what's happened. I made it. I defended myself and made it through that horrendous trial. Rinosuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations. Well, I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, no, it was a pleasure to watch you at work. So, you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place on Yume University Street. Don't forget. <clears throat> um. Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Oh. Congratulations to both of you for proving naruhoda sans innocence. Ah, our trusty judicial, judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do any... Thank you so much. If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Brett's, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. It was his idea for me to go to the university and investigate. Your... your father? Oh, yes, of course. Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Susatsu Mokutaba, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Speaking of Mekotoba... Ah, there you are! I believe congratulations are in order. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. Th thank you, Professor. Oh no, it is I who should be thanking you. After all, your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. Good friend? Oh yes, you mentioned that before. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikotoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably that's when he met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days we worked together in the same hospital. Oh, y you worked together? I've never heard you mention that before. Well, it was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn, Azuki. <laughs> Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world. 
in science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what is happening in the largest, in the world's largest melting pot. I will. I will learn all that I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asogi clan. You're not taking that sword to Great Burn, are you? Of course I am. A Japanese man's katana is his soul. This blade shows me where I need to go. And cuts down anything that's in my way. Yeah, I've definitely seen how sharp it is already with my own eyes. That reminds me, what's happened to the woman? To Giselle Brett, I mean. After all, she is guilty of murder. I asked her. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? Surely she's gonna face trial herself now. She is the true culprit, after all. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future for Shanghai. What? Shanghai? Giselle Britt will not appear in court again in this country. I am certain of that. What? But why not? It's... It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Oh. It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Inspector Hazanaga. Hey. It was a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congr- but, but, but what's all this about consular jurisdiction? We cannot try this particular foreign, foreign of our crimes here in Japan. What? We can't try her? But then, who? Who's gonna bring her to justice? A British consular court will hear her case. Somewhere far away, where our voices can't be heard. But why a consular court? Professor, I simply don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in noble circumstances you're right. Then, so long as this is not a serious incident of a highly political nature to our respective governments, they can't invoke a consular court just like that? Oh, can't they? Yes, she's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on here. Hmm. So Miss Brett can't be held accountable for her actions here in Japan. I'm afraid that for the young student, today's trail was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppance for her. I don't believe it. The British government's foreign affairs ministry has demanded that we hand over custody of Miss Brett. They're obviously taking this case of a foreign student committing murder very seriously. Hmm. But it's all going to change from now on. We can make a change. This is a time of great turmoil. This new era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day I have no doubt that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. Yes, change is coming. And we are the ones driving it. Hi. Well... I think that's enough seriousness for now. This evening calls for a celebratory drink. But Professor... You're right. This is no time for gloomy faces. We should be celebrating Rinosuke's not guilty verdict. Let's start having some fun. Hi. In that case, might I suggest La Carnival? As the head waiter, I should be delighted to provide you with ample food and drink. Um, you're a detective, Hazanaga-san, aren't you? <coughs> 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 
Let's not worry about details for now. To La Carnival, will you accompany us, Professor? Of course, La Carnival's food is second to none. I shall go and attend. I shall go and attend the paperwork for Naruhoda san's release. Oh, yes. Thank you. Hi. Alright, so, Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I. <clears throat> I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Yeah. Why did she kill Dr. Wilson? Kazuma. Yes, Rin is okay. I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. You really saved my skin today. Ha 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 I didn't do a thing. You were the lawyer in there, weren't you? That defense was all your own work. Your skills made a difference, though. One day I bet you'll be the best lawyer in the world. Hmm, I'm not so sure about that. Oh. To be honest, something kept occurring to me over and over again during that trial. I couldn't help thinking that maybe you're the one destined to become a great lawyer, not me. What? Come on, be serious. If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. For being a defense lawyer, I mean. Oh, no, no. Not me. All that tense verbal combat. I never want to go through that ever again. I just... I did what you told me to do, that's all. Because I knew I could trust you. That's the point. Sorry? What do you mean, that's the point? Listen, Rinosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Um, knowledge of the law? No, the ability to believe. To believe? To believe what? A defense lawyer has to fight for his clients. He has to believe in them at all times. Like you believed in me when I said I didn't do it. I am human, just like you. I don't have some superhuman ability to know the truth. But you have to make a choice about what, you, what to believe in and stick to it when you're defending someone. Sometimes in the courtroom you can really be backed into a corner. But being able to remain faithful to what you chose to believe in, even then... Well, that's not something that anyone can do. It takes a special kind of person. Hmm, believing, believing in your client. Just look at today's trial. I am a student lawyer with precious little real experience, but you never stopped believing in me. Well, I... You faced seemingly hopeless situations time and again, but you never stopped looking for the truth. And in the end, you found it. Through your own efforts, and because you never stopped believing in me. Thanks, Kazuma. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Rinosuke. Well, it's a favor, really. Something very important to me. It sounds serious. What is... Ah, you're still here, are you? Uh, oh, Inspector Hazanaga. I've arranged some rickshaws for us. Let's go. Th thank you. We'll be right there. Hey. Uh, let's pick up this conversation again later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study tour to Great Britain, don't forget. Ah, yes. That too. Oh. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikitoba, Susato-san, who acted as my assistant. Inspector Hasanaga, who didn't really play much of a part, but still. <clears throat> it was because of the help and support of all these people that I managed to get through all that... That I managed to get through that trial. 
but more importantly, Kazuma hadn't yet managed to ask his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. The end. Finally.